After countless hours of fun with my electric skateboard, I decided it was time for something new. I wanted something that I could ride in the rain with, has run 50 kilometers of range and provides a safer experience at high speeds. I was stuck between an electric unicycle or a DIY e-bike. Seeing that EUCs or electric unicycles costed around $2,000, I opted for the bike. I wanted a hardtail mountain bike that has strong hydraulic brakes, a nice set of front forks, and a reliable shifter. As a result, I decided on the Trek Marlin 7. Luckily, there was one on sale in decent condition which I quickly picked up. The battery powering everything is a 13 cell 17.5 amp hour battery pack made of Samsung 35E 18650 batteries in a 13S5P configuration. This battery weighs around 5 kilograms, so to mount it I needed to drill additional holes into the frame due to the space constraints of the small triangle. I see that the battery is close to the bottom with just enough space to remove it. The battery feels stable, but if it was ever to come loose, I'll drill an additional hole into the bike frame and add a rivet for three total mounting holes. In Fusion 360, I began the design of the speed controller mount. Like I said previously, the triangle on the Trek frame was smaller than the average bike, and with my poor choice of purchasing the biggest battery available, the measurements had to be precise. Using some cardboard to measure out the space that I could use, I was able to create this controller mount. My original plan was to house the speed controller inside of a closed case but decided on an exposed mount to not only allow passive air cooling but to provide more space between the battery and the ESC. I also included a small compartment that I can store my alarm system, a wallet, or a set of keys in. Taking inspiration from others online, I added a magnet recess allowing a door to magnetically seal the space. I also added my logo on the side and painted in the indents. The motor I used was a 29-inch MTX 33 wheel on a 7-speed cassette gear system. Contacting the seller directly allowed me to grab this specific spec of motor so the shifter would work and the motor would fit into the frame. Arguably, during my conversion process, the most important step was the torque arm. Torque arms are crucial because the brushless motors used in these e-bikes are capable of outputting a massive amount of torque in one instance. The force of 1500 watts on a dropout is the equivalent of a 400 pound person resting on a piece of steel that's half an inch thick. As you can imagine, that's not going to last, so what the torque arm does is it transfers the torque of the motor through its arm and into the frame of the bike, preventing the possibility of snapping the dropouts. Once your dropouts snap, you need a new frame. Ironically, during my first ride, the motor would rip itself out of the dropouts. To my understanding, everything was done correctly. After countless hours of troubleshooting, help from friends, and unimaginable frustration, the problem ended up being the lack of washers between the frame and the motor. If you decide to build an e-bike yourself and have this exact problem, you know what the solution is now. Even if it means stretching the frame out to fit them on both sides, you must use them. Special thanks to Doug for helping me with this. Now with the added width of a motor, the rear brake no longer fits. Remounting the brake would require metal work, so the brake pad would wear evenly on both sides when braking. So I was invested in just using regenerative braking for the rear brake and have mechanical front brakes that would remove the need for CAD and metal work. The biggest problem with this was the motor would then be applying force in the forwards direction and in the backwards direction, resulting in the need for two torque arms. And with the BMS being rated at 5 charging amps, I would also run the risk of destroying my battery if I was ever to brake suddenly. Mechanically remounting the brake seemed like the better option. My first mount design was created with the factory brake rotor as a reference. Only a fraction of the rotor contacted the brake pad. It worked a lot better than I expected with stopping still possible, but with the uneven wear on the brake pad, it wasn't going to last longer than a few hundred kilometers nor be safe in the event of slowing down at high speeds. So back to the drawing boards I went, but this time with a 180mm brake rotor as a reference. Using a 180mm brake rotor as opposed to a 160mm brake rotor, I had the perfect setup. To ensure that the brakes lined up correctly, I drew out my design in CAD and tested it on the bike with a 3D printed prototype. Using this method, I could confirm that the brake wouldn't rub and the mounting holes would line up. 
After 4 iterations, this one worked fine so I traced the layout onto a steel slab and by using a drill press, miter saw, and a file, this bracket was created. Running everything is the speed controller. I went with the 14S 1000W controller that peaks around 1300 watts. I would recommend getting the 1500W variant as it comes with 6 additional FETs for only $20 more. With 6 additional FETs you get improved thermal dissipation, less strain on each individual FET, and the ability for higher output power. The functions stay constant in both variants, both 1000 and 1500 watts, with regenerative braking, LCD integration, and a plenty of other things that I won't use. My kit came with really long cable wires, so I had to hide them somewhere. The middle triangle being utilized to its full potential, I had to do some CAD work. So after a couple of hours, this is what I came up with in Fusion 360. It bolts onto the centerpiece, then is zip tied to the frame. It's surprisingly effective holding up against bumps, taps, jumps, and the bike hanging upside down. Special thanks to Doug, or you may know him as Doug Nutt, who helped me figure out my torque arm problems. Alex for helping me with the metal working on the brake rotor relocation bracket. Caleb for letting me use his brand new workshop. Gordon for helping me plan out the parts for my build. Mr. Smith, my tech ed teacher, for letting me use his metal workshop. And lastly, Mr. Watts for lending me his bike tools. After building this e-bike, I was only able to perform one really long range test, and the results were 55 kilometers at an average pace of 25 kilometers per hour, with 46% of battery remaining after the trip. The top speed is exactly 50 kilometers per hour on a flat surface with zero pedal assistance. This is all subjective on how much you weigh, how fast you pedal, etc. All these tests were done in temperatures of around 5 degrees Celsius, which I was extremely impressed with. This concludes the video. If you have any questions about your conversion, feel free to comment down below and I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. If you enjoyed this, give this video a like and subscribe, it helps me with the YouTube algorithm. So what's next? I recently started on an Arduino powered robotic bartender project, a smart 3D printed Aaron's creation logo with addressable RGBs, and I'm planning the build of my first smart mirror. This year is my senior year of high school so I haven't had much time to work on personal projects. Next year as I enter university, hopefully I'll have more time to work on these. Thank you, and bye bye.